His form was clothed in a tight-fitting habit of buckskin, which was colored a jetty black, and he presented a striking contrast to anything one sees as a garment in the wild far west. And this was not all either. A broad black hat was slouched down over his eyes. He wore a thick black veil over the upper portion of his face, through the eye holes of which there gleamed a pair of orbs of piercing intensity. The black rider he might have been justly termed, for his thoroughbred steed was as black as coal, but we have not seen fit to call him such. His name is Deadwood Dick, and let that suffice for the present. In the second half of the 19th century, the Wild West lived in the imagination of the eastern states through magazines called dime novels. These magazines were cheap, the stories were poorly written, and the writing was exploitive and sensational. They dominated American pop culture for a 50-year period. Long before the dime novel, the public school system of the American colonies and later United States of America created a very unique situation. They had the most literate population on the planet. Their literacy began with a wanting desire to read the Bible. But in very short time, Americans began reading for pleasure as a form of escapism. James Fenimore Cooper, Nathaniel Hawthorne, Washington Irving, and Edgar Allan Poe are just a few of the great authors that sparked the American imagination. Literacy crossed over social and economic barriers. Fiction came into demand. Books at this time cost anywhere from 15 to 25 cents each, and that was an uncomfortable sum for many. Cheaper forms of fiction were in demand. Starting in the 1830s, readers found fiction in the form of 8 to 12 page newspapers called story pages. As the American Civil War was about to begin, a story pages publisher named Erastus Beadle decided to print a small novella on very cheap, acidic, pulp paper. That way he could bring his price down to a dime. He chose to publish a 100-page story by Anne Sophia Steffens. Malaska, the Indian wife of the white hunter, sold 65,000 copies in just a few months. People began seeking out this book, often referring to it as the dime novel. The term dime novel stuck to the genre, even though many dime novels actually sold for a nickel and many sold for as high as 15 cents. Beetle continued publishing and had his first major success with Seth Jones and the Captives of the Frontier. The popularity of this dime novel inspired many publishers to get into the business. The dime novel began to take on various formats. They ranged from digest to tabloid size. The genres were wide ranging too. Detective, romance, and science fiction were all very popular, but the genre that came to dominate was the Western. Newspaper man Horace Greeley said, Go west, young man. And through the dime novel, all of America did. Readers scooped up the real life and fictional adventures of western icons like Wild Bill, Kit Carson, and Jesse James. And if the epic lives of these legends weren't enough to slick the thirst of eastern readers, then readers turned to more outlandish fictional characters. The first Western Mask Avenger would be published in Beatles Half Dime Library in 1877. Five hundred dollar reward for the apprehension and arrest of a notorious young desperado who hails to the name of Deadwood Dick. His present whereabouts are somewhat contiguous to the Black Hills. For further information and so forth, apply immediately to Hugh Van Zavier at the Metropolitan Saloon, Deadwood City. And that's how we're introduced to Deadwood Dick in the first story. He's an outlaw, a bad guy. Him and his band of road agents rob stagecoaches entering and leaving the city of Deadwood. His alter ego is Edward Harris, but his friends call him Ned. He's a respectable cowboy and miner. Things get complicated when Ned's sister Anita shows up in the city of Deadwood. 
she is followed by two men who look to do her and Ned harm. They are Alexander Fillmore and his son Clarence. After some run-ins, it's revealed that Fillmore is actually Anita and Ned's abusive uncle. Fillmore is also responsible for the death of their parents and the stealing of their inheritance. In the end, both Fillmores get their just fates dancing at the end of their world. Future Stories took on a Robin Hood of the Old West theme, making Deadwood Dick one of the more popular dime novel heroes. The real life person of Calamity Jane is also introduced in this story. She plays a romantic interest throughout all of the fictitious Deadwood Dick stories. The use of a living known person in these stories convinced readers that Deadwood Dick was also a real person, and this belief was played up by a number of cowboys who claimed to be the fictitious hero. Deadwood Dick was the creation of writer Edward L. Wheeler. Wheeler began writing in the mid-1870s. He did most of his writing while living in Philadelphia. He created a number of memorable characters, Hurricane Nell, Eureka Jim, and Denver Doll. However, Deadwood Dick would be his most successful by far. We actually know a little bit about Wheeler through letters written to friends and relatives. He refers to himself as a sensational novelist and he jokes about being engaged in the business of sending boys out west to kill engines. In 1878, he made $950 that year and writes, pretty good considering the hard times. Based on the popularity of Deadwood Dick, Wheeler wrote and produced a theatrical play based on Dick's adventures in 1880. It's unknown how many times this play was performed initially. After Wheeler walked away from the theater, this play continued being performed well into the 1950s. Wheeler passed away in 1885. We actually don't know how he died. All we do know is that Wheeler's wife is identified in the 1886 Philadelphia Public Directory as a widow. What's notable is that Wheeler killed Deadwood Dick that very same year. Perhaps Wheeler knew he was dying and decided to take his creation with him. For the record, that's speculation on my part. Wheeler may have thought he killed Deadwood Dick, but fictional characters are not made of flesh and blood. Fictional characters never truly die. They're only waiting for a new writer to breathe life into them. Deadwood Dick was one of Beetle Publishing's most profitable characters. New stories appeared after Wheeler's death. Sidekick Dick Bristol takes up the mask and becomes Deadwood Dick Jr. These stories have Wheeler's name on them, but they're certainly not written by him. These stories are written by hacks. That is until Beetle Publishing hired writer Jesse Cowdrick to take over the series. Cowdrick is one of the more prolific dime novel writers. He is probably best known for his detective stories, and he incorporated mystery into the new Deadwood Dick Jr. stories. They paid him $75 a story, but Edward Wheeler's name would remain as the credited writer. Cowdrick would write at least 25 of these stories before he passed away in 1895. dime novel came to an end in the early 20th century, but Deadwood Dick managed to live on. Over time, a number of real people claimed to be Deadwood Dick. Some of them were actors who played him on stage, others were cowboys using the name to get attention. Probably the last person who made the claim that they were Deadwood Dick was a South Dakota man named Dick Clark. Clark was an old geezer who lived in a log cabin. He would hustle people for drinks by telling them stories about the town of Deadwood during the Old West days. In 1926, the United States was celebrating its 150th birthday. South Dakota, as part of its celebration, wanted to commemorate their Old West heritage. All the real Deadwood legends were long gone by then. That is, until someone mentioned that there's an old man claiming to be Deadwood Dick. Before long, Mr. Clark was being paraded around South Dakota as a living legend of the Old West. The story got out and kept growing until Clark was sent to Washington, D.C., to meet and shake hands with President Calvin Coolidge. Deadwood Dick would make the scene again in 1940, this time in a new medium, the motion picture. 
Columbia Pictures introduced Deadwood Dick to a new generation in the form of a low-budget movie serial. In this new medium, the Mask Avenger would take on the evil skull and his crew of cutthroats. After the movie serial, Deadwood Dick would fall into obscurity. In recent years, regional theater groups and reenactors have revived Edward Wheeler's play, and new plays have followed. So, it may be a little premature to think that Deadwood Dick has made his final ride into the sunset. <laughs>